testing. A psychologist has prepared an optimism test to administer to graduate students on a yearly basis, right before graduation. The test attempts to measure how each of the graduating classes feels about their future. The researcher is correlating a higher score with a higher level of optimism. Last year's class had a mean score of 56, and the sample of 25 seniors from this year's class produced an average score of 59, <clears throat> with a sum of squares of 20, 2,400. On the basis of this sample, can the psychologist conclude that this year's class has a different level of optimism than last year's class? So we're going to use an alpha level 0 0.05, but did you catch if it's a two-tail or a one-tail test? I'll read that part again. On the basis of this sample, can the psychologist conclude that this year's class has a different level of optimism compared to last year's class? So that different right, word should have tipped you off to say, oh, that's a two-tailed test, right? Because it could be they actually have a negative, right, or, or a lower level of, of optimism compared to last year's class. And then it also could be that, I don't know, maybe they actually have a higher level of optimism than, than in last year's class, okay? So because we're having an alpha level set at 0 0.05, but we're splitting it, so we're actually going to have um, 0 0.025 five on this side and point zero two five zero on this side so we have two and a half percent here and two and a half percent here again two and a half two point five percent is point zero two five um, again on both sides okay so let's find our our t crit okay so um, we know that our t crit formula we need to find our degrees of freedom right so um, so we need to find our um, degrees of freedom based on a sample size of 25 students, right? Because we have 25 students, so what would our um, degrees of freedom is just n minus one. So we have a degrees of freedom of 24, okay? And then uh, we use our T crit um, table over here, or critical value of T, right? However you wanna say it, right? I use T crit, you can use CVT for critical value of T. And you go um, 0 0.05, um, two tail, right? So we're gonna be in this part right here. Um, and N equals, tw or degrees of freedom equals 24, which gives us um, a T crit, or critical value of T, of plus or minus 2.064. So it means we can have it over here at negative 2.064, and we can have it all the way over here at positive 2.064. Right. So again, if, if our T obtained falls though in this region, the body, right, we have to fail to reject. Right. This is our fail to reject zone. Um, and but if it falls in the red zone, that's our reject zone. That's like, woohoo, we did something. Um, something is changing, right? Okay, so we need to find our um, a couple things, right? So we have our T crit, our critical value of T, however you want to say that. So let's do a sample variance. Okay, and remember, keep in mind, sample variance, you know, looks like this. So it's um, sum of squares divided by um, n minus 1 because we're dealing with a sample. So we have sum of squares of 2,400 um, divided by 24 because we had 25 people in our study. So we have variance equaling 100. Okay, um, sorry, variance equaling 100, which gives me a standard deviation of 10, right? Because variance equals, or, or sorry, hold on, let's, let's go here. Let me back up just a little bit. Standard deviation equals the square root of variance. That's how I got, I got that. So 100 squared equals 10. Okay, so we know we have 100 for our variance. Okay, now let's do standard error, right? So standard error is this um, S with an M at the bottom, right? Um, and that equals the square root of variance divided by n, right? So we know that our variance is 100 divided by 25, right? Um, or the square root of 4. So our standard error equals 2. Let's kind of circle some of the ones that, that we have found already. Now that I have that, I can throw it into my t obtained formula, right? So mean minus mu divided by um, this standard error, right? And so our mean, right, up here from our sample was 59, and our mu, like the population average, was um, 56 divided by our standard error of 2. 
right? Or 3 divided by 2, right? And so our t obtained equals um, 1.5. T obtained is positive 1.5. So our, our graduating class had a higher optimism than, than previous class, but not quite what we needed, right? So here is our, our mu, or our zero point. And keep in mind, anything on this side is going to be positive numbers, and anything on this side is going to be negative numbers, okay? So our T obtained of 1.5 is right about there. All right, so it's positive 1.5. Good, not good enough though. So we actually have to fail to reject the null. And because we're failing to reject that null, we'll give it a sad face, right? We don't have to find um, effect size, right? Because you don't really find effect size unless you reject the null hypothesis. It'd be weird to be like, how effective was your treatment? And you say, it wasn't effective. No, really, how effective was it? It wasn't effective. So unless you find the treatment effective, or in this case, the graduating class, statistically significantly higher optimism than last year's class, you don't find effect size.